All right, my controls. Your controls. So autopilot. Let's go heading and altitude 2,700. Arm. Take go down. Take the nav source in, and there we go. ILS four. Okay. ILS four. I'll turn the landing light now since we're going to be maneuvering a bit. The wind is holding me out here. Thank you, Mount Traffic. One, right. two, four, two, kilo. I'll be making a left downwind for runway four. Rocky Mountain. I'm not catching it. Rocky Mount Traffic, 472, probably missed taxing via Alpha to runway there four. There we go. All right, there's my glide slope. Okay. Rocky Mount Traffic, 526 Delta Sierra is approximately 10 out on the practice ILS for four. Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain traffic, white series, 400 kilo, uh, entering left downwind, four, Rocky Mountain. Yeah, place getting busy. Yeah, that one kind of concerns me. Leaving altitude. Rocky Mountain traffic, down at 526 Delta 6 southwest, practice ILS, Rocky Mountain. It's there, four. Oh, I did. You said practice ILS? I, I did not say that. You're right. I don't know what he's gonna do. I don't know if he's gonna try and sneak in behind you or extend his down. Two four eight Bravo Lima, turning final runway four Rocky Mountain. Yeah, that dude's no problem. Rocky Mountain traffic white series four circular now midfield left downwind runway four Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain traffic down to five two six Delta Sierra four to the southwest practice ILS four Rocky Mountain. All that. Hopefully he'll figure it out. Two four eight Bravo Lima doing a go around Rocky Mountain traffic. November four seven two Bravo Lima is departing straight out runway four Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain traffic at side four five nine seven Papa is eleven miles to the north heading southbound at two thousand seven hundred aerial survey work Rocky Mountain. Right about nine hundred. Rocky Mountain traffic white series November four one zero kilo. Left base. Oh. What? Runway four, Rocky Mountain. Far out is he? Oh, I don't know. I don't even see him, bro. Uh, traffic turning base to Rocky Mountain. We're on a three mile straight in ILS for four, Rocky Mountain. Yeah, you're supposed to do the pattern, but I'll, I'll go right. I'll go wide for you. Well, I'm doing a practice ILS. I can't do the pattern. You're supposed to do the pattern. Hey, you do a pattern on All right, ILS. Hey, he was going to turn right in front yeah, of us. Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess so. Oh, well, he's not doing the pattern. Yeah, I'll just go right ahead. I'll show him. Back about traffic, 526 Delta Short final, runway four. We'll be doing a low approach, Rocky Mountain. All right. 100, let's blow it. Back about traffic. Autopilot. Long left base, four, four, Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain traffic, 526 Delta Sierra, right turn out, be departed in the area to the west, Rocky Mountain. That's a classic. You're supposed to do the pattern. And switch the CDI over here. Yeah, Mr. Pattern is coming over the numbers right now. Oh, I guess he's going to teach me a lesson. You're supposed to do the pattern. I'm going to just cut right in front of you until I until you call me on it. Basically, what he was saying. All right, so let's take a look at this. Instrument-rated pilots are required to fly at least six approaches every six months. More would be better, and a lot of them are done practice in fair weather conditions because a lot of pilots don't fly enough in uh, instrument conditions to get those done. So it's a pretty good chance at some point you're going to run into somebody doing an instrument approach while you're flying a VFR traffic pattern. So it's going to happen. It is legal and you just have to learn how to work together so everybody can fit into at the same time. So the FAA saw that there was some question on how all this is going to work and they put out an advisory circular. It's a uh, 90-66B. Basically, this explains the ins and outs of the VFR traffic pattern in these straight-in approaches. 
Okay, section 9.5 of this AC addresses straight-in approaches. And basically what it says is you're allowed to make a straight-in approach, contrary to what Mr. White Sierra said, um, but both the pilot on the straight-in approach and the pilots in the pattern should look out for each other and communicate. Pretty straightforward. That happens VFR all the time in the pattern. People talk, I'm on final, I'm on base, I'm turning left crosswind. It's the same principle. Now, if you're flying VFR, I don't recommend a long straight in approach. It's just not proper etiquette and there's no reason for it. It only takes a minute or so to get in the pattern and do it. Now, if the airport's totally empty and there's no one around, then maybe. But other than that, I don't recommend straight in approaches on a, on a VFR, only on the instrument uh, approaches that you need. Now, section 10.6 addresses practice instrument approaches. And basically what this is saying is that instrument pilots do not get priority over any other pilots and they have to blend into the uh, VFR traffic pattern as best they can. So as you saw, both myself and my safety pilot were monitoring all the uh, VFR traffic in the pattern and kind of seeing where we fit in and making sure that we could just slide in. And everything was going pretty well. And had Mr. Cirrus turned in front of us uh, when we were five, six miles out, we'd had no issue. If we thought we were getting too close, we could have slowed down. Uh, my approach speed on an instrument approach is 90 knots. So I have a good 15, 20 knots that I can throttle back if I have enough time to do that and slow down and keep the separation. Now in the FAR, 14 CFR part 91 addresses specifically who has the right of way in the pattern. Uh, it states that aircraft while on final approach to land or while landing have the right of way over other aircraft in flight or operating on the surface. When two or more aircraft are approaching the airport for the purpose of landing, the aircraft at the lower altitude has the right of way. Now, I think Mr. White Cirrus and I were probably about the same altitude at those at those points in the uh, in the pattern, and the FAA uh, specifically addresses that, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, there are there are exceptions to who is lower on that. Now, what Mr. White Cirrus didn't do was say, "Hey, traffic on final, where are you?" He just said, oh, turn in final, and we're coming in. Now, I was on a three-mile final. He was turning. I don't know exactly where he was. He could have been a mile off the end of the airport. He could have been a mile and a half. He could have been shorter. He didn't say. He didn't ask where I was. So me looking at three miles out and him turning, so he's got to go at least a mile off his base to get in there. I'm seeing two aircraft that are going to be pretty darn close together. He could have slipped in there if he was close and maybe had a mile separation, but I think it was going to be shorter. And the fact that after I told him I was on a three mile final, he decided to, to extend his downwind and, uh, and not turn base, he might have thought the same thing. So I don't know if he was trying to teach me a lesson because you saw his comment, well, you're supposed to do the pattern, but you know, he didn't really take a, an exception for instrument approaches. So either he just wasn't paying attention to where I was or didn't care, or he was trying to teach me a lesson. So I suspect he was going to be pretty close. Uh, my safety pilot spotted him at about 30 seconds after these radio calls. And then about uh, 10 seconds more, so about 40 seconds total, he was a beam us. So he would have been pretty close. And really, it only cost him 40 seconds extra in his pattern anyway. Because usually, my, my rule of thumb is, once you pass traffic a beam that's on final, you can turn your base and come in behind him. So, 40 seconds, maybe a minute tops was what he was trying to shave off by cutting in front of me, unless he was trying to teach me a lesson. Where does final begin? Obviously, if I'm 10 miles out, I'm not gonna be considered on final. I'm on an instrument approach. Does it begin at one mile out, two miles out? What specifically does established on final mean? Maybe I was on approach, he didn't deem me on final, so he didn't give me right away. I don't know. I don't know where that exact demarcation is. I was three miles out. To me, that's pretty close. I'm established on final, so I, I took it as, I'm on final and I have the right of way. Although, had I had to do something different, I wouldn't have just plowed in there. If he'd come in and kept coming, I probably would have had to broken off and go somewhere else because I just thought he was going to be too close. So, all these questions about who has the right of way, who's low or who's on final, that's kind of the hair splitting stuff that the FAA does after an accident to assign blame. When you're flying the plane and you're, you're in that moment, you have to make a pretty quick decision and try to stay away from other traffic. So, once I notified him that I was on a three mile final, he did the right thing in my view. He decided, okay, I'll just get extend my downwind and come in behind you. And I really think that could have been the whole thing to start with. You know, his comment about you should do the pattern kind of I think gives away his attitude. Uh, I oftentimes am in the pattern uh, with students or myself and I have people coming in on ILS approaches. We just extend our downwind till they're past us and then we turn base and we come in. It's really not a big deal. No muss, no fuss. Everybody's safe. Everybody gets along. And I do communicate with those guys. That's one thing he didn't do. When he's getting ready to turn base, it would have been nice to say, hey, you know, traffic on final, how far out are you? 
and then he could make an informed decision on whether he should have turned in or not. All right, so just briefly back to that question of whoever has the lower altitude uh, has the right of way. And that doesn't necessarily apply in the situation, but the FAA kind of clarified their rules, uh, specifically rule 91.113G. And what they said was, this regulation means short in an of an emergency, an aircraft already established on final does have the right of way over an aircraft not yet on final, i.e. downwind or base. And the second aircraft may not turn in front of the aircraft on final if that will force the aircraft on final to alter or, or abandon its approach. So I deemed that, that him turning there would have caused me to do something that I didn't want to do. It might not have, but why take a chance? Why try to slip in there? 40 seconds longer to his, to his approach really didn't matter that much. So the bottom line of all this is, is to communicate with everybody and try to play nice with everybody. Um, I do a lot of practice approaches with students and myself, and sometimes we're coming in one direction and there's another pilot coming in the exact opposite direction on the same runway uh, doing an instrument approach. We communicate with each other, we decide, okay, I'm gonna turn off or I'm gonna take a circle to land or something like that. It always works out fine. So communicating is the key to making sure that everybody's safe in the pattern, not trying to teach someone a lesson because you don't think they're doing the right thing. And finally, section 10.7 of that AC circular says, don't start a fight on the radio in the pattern. Do whatever's necessary to stay safe and keep everybody where they should be. And if you really have a problem with the guy, wait till you get on the ground and then you can discuss it in person. You don't wanna tie up the radio frequency with hollering and shouting and carrying on and blaming each other. That just causes other people not to be able to get their, their traffic pattern calls in. So wait till you get on the ground for your really an issue. In this case, it wasn't that big a deal. Um, I just thought he had a little uh, attitude that he was trying to you know, come after me for some reason. We, we did a low approach, we got it, we went somewhere else. The airport was getting a little too crowded for us anyway. So who do you think was right? Do you think I'm, I'm all washed up and I should have just broken off immediately and let him turn in base? Or was I right? Was I really on final? Uh, what's your opinions on this? Leave a comment below and uh, let me know where you stand on this. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.